Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Something to be on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir Lee's Path. So, the last episode, oh boy, had some great art and absolutely loved it. And I'm wondering just exactly where things are going to go with our beloved possum boy, po our beloved possum daddy. But anyway, guys, please stick around. I'm doing this video at night, so voice may be a little bit lower, maybe not. We'll see. But yeah, let's jump right into it. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right, <clears throat> okay. Okay. There's not much that I haven't seen before, but the thought of getting caught staring is enough to intensely to intensify the embarrassment coursing through me. Just don't think about it too much, Wallace. Focus on something else. The only thing that manages to catch my attention is his scar. Surprising me that it's just sitting out in the open. I would have thought he'd want to hide that, but then again, with how little he's covering, I don't think he really cares what anyone else thinks. And something from the conversation Lee and Charlie had yesterday comes to mind, and my curiosity gets the better of me. So... This is what you like to wear? He ra mm, excuse me. He raises an eyebrow at that, and, is, and if it wasn't for the barely visible grin on his face, I thought I would have, I thought I'd have offended him. Is that a problem? No, 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 no. It's just it's so different from what you usually wear. Yeah, it is. His face returns to his usual stoic expression, and he walks back to the edge of the pier, leaning against the railing this time as he looks over at me, expectant. I quickly join him, leaning my side against the rails. I look up at Lee. As soon as I'm next to him, he open, he looks up at the sky, a distant look in his eyes. It feels like he's waiting for something. If you prefer wearing this, why do you wear that what you usually wear? I told you, didn't I? It keeps people away. No one wants to fuck with the thug. It didn't keep me away. And you wonder why I worry about you. He looks down at his clothes and lets out a sigh, sounding defeated. He doesn't look upset. If anything, he looks relatively unfazed by what he's been saying. This kind of stuff invites attention that I don't need anymore. Don't get the wrong idea, either. I like what I wear these days, too. Charlie didn't seem to think so. She knows I like the jacket, but she doesn't like how I avoid them. She's always sticking her nose into places it doesn't belong. At the mention of his sister, a smile creeps back onto his face. Even if what he's saying doesn't sound particularly nice, there's a fondness to his voice that gives away how he truly feels. Charlie's lucky to still have him. She calls you uh, by your real name. It sounded like it annoyed you. As soon as I bring up his name, he blows a, pu a puff of air, and for a moment I'm worried that I'm poking something I shouldn't be. But he catches my worried expression and nudges my shoulder, inclining me to carry on. Why did you change it? He doesn't respond at first, instead opting to gaze up to the sky. It's like he's searching the clouds for an answer, whether that's the one to, that's the one to my question or one of his own, I don't know. Following his lead, I lean my head back and stare at the blue expanse. The clouds are plentiful, but none of them are too, but none of them are an angry gray. There's a piece to just embracing the atmosphere alongside Lee. My father named me that. My mother named Charlie, and he, and he named me. He expected a girl, but when he got me, they decided to stay with it. Do you like? Do you not like the girly name? I, I've met guys named Ashley in high school. No, it's not that. His tone isn't upset or angry, but tired. He sounds absolutely exhausted, as if this topic drained every last piece of energy in his body and kept going for good measure. I don't want to have a name from that man. I'd rather change it myself. So you shortened it? He hesitates at that, and for once he looks unsure about what to say. It's not an expression that fits the image of Lee I have in my head. That solid rock isn't shaken by anything. But Lee is just a person like all of us. It's unfair for me to put him on a pedestal like that. There are things that make him uncomfortable, too. You don't have to answer to that. It's okay, I don't mind. My mother always loved, the, my, loved my name. She used to always tell me that it's a beautiful name to fit my beautiful boy. My father doesn't deserve to name me, but I'll keep part of it to honor her. She sounds amazing. He only nods before looking towards me with a smile so soft that it clashes with his scary demeanor. I bet people who don't know Lee well could never imagine him looking like this. There's a moment where it looks like he's going to reach out and touch me, but he stops himself, pulling back and looking towards me with what looks like a speck of worry in his eyes. Are you doing better? Nose all healed? Oh, that's what this is about. He's still going on about this even now. It's nice that he cares, but I feel like he's beating himself up over nothing. Yeah, it's all fine. It doesn't even hurt anymore. Really? It doesn't sound like he believes me, like I'm just... It doesn't sound like he believes me, like I'm just lying for his own benefit. Nope. It's a little infuriating, but I know it comes from a good place. I'm not lying. It's really better. Blood even came out of my fur and everything. 
That's, that's great, kid. I promise you I'll... Yeah, yeah, I heard you before. You don't have to keep apologizing. It was an accident. But I... I promise you, if it's still hurting, I'd let you know. I swear it. His eyebrows furrow, and there's a short moment where I'm worried he'll keep pushing on it. Thankfully, he gets the message, and his smile begins to creep across his face, white teeth standing out starkly against his gray fur. Calling him handsome would be an understatement. He's like an angel that everyone mistakes for a demon. I wonder what she thinks he is. I have a feeling I know what the answer is, though. You should wear that more. I like it. More than the other one? I prefer this. You look happier in it. That's because of the company, not the outfit. It looks good on you, too. I like it a lot. He raises an eyebrow at that, and for a moment I think I've said too much. Did that make me sound like Oscar? I, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it because it's hot. It, it, not completely, at least. He huffs out a chuckle under his breath and nudges me with an elbow, pushing himself off the railing. He walks back to the restaurant, only slowing down to call something over his shoulder. It's hard to resist following the outline of his body, following that gray fur all the way down to his belt. I've never met anyone with such an elegant body. It'd be hard not to appreciate it. It might be my imagination, but I feel like he's intentionally giving me a great view of him as he walks away. It's nothing too noticeable, but it's just a feeling. Let's head back in and get this over with. Get up, we'll get what over with? Yep. The rest of our group is gathered at the table. Lily, Oscar, Lily and Oscar are both laughing while Lucas pouts about something that they said. I hope they're not teasing him too badly, though I feel like he can handle his own with them. He looks a lot more comfortable with them than before. He doesn't even look annoyed at Oscar at all. That's definitely got to be a step in the right direction. The moment they catch sight of us, however, they immediately fall silent and just stare dumbfounded. It isn't hard to guess to fi it isn't hard isn't a hard guess to figure out what they're staring at. He doesn't look surprised in the slightest, just looking towards me and shrugging as if to say, "Told you so." I don't really think it would be that big of a deal, but I guess I was the same. I was the same way just moments ago. That single action lights the fuse and it sets off the rest of our group. Oscar all but jumps out of his seat, looking between the rest of us and Lee as if screaming, "Look at this!" Yeah, you never told me you can dress sexy. This looks like something I'd see at a club or something. Hell, I can even see myself wearing that, and that's saying something, man. It's just something I used to wear in high school. He had a sexy phase, man? Can you stay in this more? I'm sure it won't just be me who'd appreciate it. I think all the boys would appreciate it. <laughs> he waggles his eyes towards me and even nudges Lucas's shoulder. Amusingly, the fox looks more surprised than that. Looks surprised by that than what Lee's wearing. He... <laughs> You keep this up, and this will be the last time you see me wearing this. Ah, oh, come on, don't be like that. We're just saying you look hot, right, guys? You do look really good. I'm enjoying the eye candy, but I feel like I'm not the target demographic here. He lets out a huff, but I don't think he's annoyed. I just don't think he was expecting this kind of attention. Instead of acknowledging them, he looks over at me. You can't really blame them. It's really different from what you usually wear. They're just a little starstruck. You look good. He rolls his eyes at that and looks back to the group, but I'm, unable, but I'm able to see the corner corners of his mouth twitching, making it clear he's holding back a smile. I don't think he wants to give Oscar the satisfaction. I don't know what the big deal is. It's just a hoodie. My roommate wears stuff like this all the time. And just like that, the attention switches from Lee to the Fox, mostly Oscar's as he leans in closer, much to Lucas's dismay. Have you have to introduce me some, to him sometime. I think we'd get along great. Yeah, I bet the two of you would. You're both very loud and have no sense of boundaries. <laughs> so, is that a yes? Lucas, is, Lucas sighs and stares up at the otter, looking defeated and just nods, not even bothering to resist Oscar's prying. Content with that answer, Oscar, Oscar goes back to his seat and returns to admiring Lee. To his credit, Lee doesn't even bother reacting to his spying at all. I'm not sure if it's because he just expected this or if he's used to it, but either way, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like the attention bothers him too much. Now, as exciting as Lee's new outfit is, we should probably settle down before we annoy the staff. At the sound of that, Oscar tears as it tears his eyes away from the possum and looks towards our side of the table, putting on an innocent face that looks too cheesy to even be to even remotely be believable. I come here a lot, so let's not get me in trouble with the owners. I like this place, all right? You're the one making a scene. We just want a quiet lunch, but I don't think you know what quiet means. A devilish grin spreads across the otter's face, and with such with such ominousness that it makes my skin crawl. His eyes dart between Lucas and me before he leans back against the cushioned seat. He looks like an evil mastermind with the way his eyes are twinkling with mischief. I saw both of you checking him out. Wallace was a second away from jeweling on his lap, and you're not as subtle as you think you are, Grumpy. I caught your eyes darting back to him whenever you thought no one was looking. I expect Lucas to give him some kind of retort or insult, but he just looks away, acting as if Oscar didn't say anything at all. 
I can't see any of his features, but I can almost feel the heat coming off of him. Enough, both of you. Am I sitting next to Oscar? Oh, right, sorry, that was a little too much fun to watch. I got distracted. Here, let me sort it out. After what feels like an hour of shuffling about, which in actuality is only a few minutes, but Oscar's desire to peek at every angle of Lee makes it feel like an eternity, we manage to seat ourselves inside the booth. On one side sits Oscar and Lee, the two largest guys in the group, though Oscar dwarfs even Lee in sheer size. Despite not, knowing despite not getting along, Lee approves of the idea. He's probably happy that Oscar isn't sitting with Lucas or myself. There's no complaints from the otter at all. There's just there's too much of him to enjoy regardless of where he sits. Lucas looks relieved to not have to sit next to him, and there's a part of me that feels bad for Oscar. He's constantly being put on trial, and I'm almost certain he doesn't mean any harm. The other side of the otter's... I was about to say the otter side. The other side of the table... On the other side of the table sits Lily, Lucas, and myself, with Lily sitting closest to the wall, and Lucas taking the end closet... The end closest to the exit. There had been a moment of awkwardness when Lucas bumped my arm while trying to get in, recoiling back for a moment and scouting the reaction from the rest of the table as if he'd done something awful. By the time we all got settled in, Lucas's ears were burning pink and Oscar's smirk had grown into a full-fledged grin. There's an awkward silence between the group, but before I can consider breaking it, Lily clears her throat. Our attention turns to her and she flashes a soft smile on her face. There isn't a single sign of discomfort or nervousness in her expression. Thanks for coming. Sorry for asking this on such short notice. I thought it'll be good to get together again to check on Wallace and work on our project some more. Not even a second after she finishes speaking, all eyes shift towards me, concern and curiosity mixing together in everyone's eyes. Unlike Lily, I don't have the composure to handle nearly half a, half a dozen people staring at me, so I stare towards the table, hoping that it will magically make the conversation be over. Everyone's waiting for an answer, though, and it's unfair to keep them worrying. I'm doing fine. It was it really was just a bad dream, and that left me a little bit shook up. I'm feeling a lot better after a good night's sleep. Knowing that there might still be doubt, I look up towards the group and give them an uh, give them an uh, and give them as authentic a smile as I can. The edge is trembling slightly. Not from any problems, mind you. Just the attention is causing a swell of anxiety in my chest. After a moment, the most of the occupants relax. Only Lee continues to stare towards me. His green eyes still bursting with worry, but but he doesn't press any further. At times like this, it's a blessing that he's so much more quiet than the rest of the group. <laughs> yeah, I bet. It's all dark and mysterious here. Definitely gave our boy a good time. Oscar nudges his elbow against Lee's arm, his lecherous expression making it, clear, making it pretty clear what the implication of that is. <laughs> I bet that's why you're wearing this, huh? Wanted to cheer him up some more, right? Discredit Lee doesn't seem to take the bait at all and just gives him a sigh. The concern, in, the concern in his eyes earlier fades to a combination of disappointment and annoyance, but it tapers as he looks over to me. That's kind of the point. It's the reason one of us took care of Wallace, after all. Lucas's judgmental tone is jarring compared to Oscar's sultry one. What the fox did say, however, is much more confusing. Even Oscar looks surprised before an even wider grin crosses his face. Are you saying you wanted to make sure Wallace had a great time? Make sure he was satisfied? Lily's chuckle is quiet, and I can barely hear it as she muffles it with her hand. Lee, on the other hand, looks ready to interrupt and put a stop to where this is going before he cuts off, before he's cut off by Lucas. Obviously, we all wanted to. We would have done it all together if we could. <laughs> that breaks Lily, and her giggle transforms into a full into a full blown laugh. Oscar quickly joins her as Lee's entire body sags, unclear if he's disappointed or just exhausted. No, Lucas, no. <laughs> oh my God. As for myself, I can feel myself looking towards the wall as my ears burn. It's at times like this that really makes me curse having white fur. Any flushing is easily seen through the almost transparent cheek fluff. The confused expression on Lucas's face shows that he's being completely left in the dark. Opening my mouth to explain it, I gl a glare from Lee from Lee makes me stop in my tracks. Looks like he doesn't want me to give Oscar the satisfaction of corrupting Lucas's innocence. Instead, I just place a hand on his arm, rubbing it slowly in a reassuring way. Looking towards me, confusion is still evident in his expression as his ears droop and press against his head. <laughs> Don't worry about it, he's just teasing you. Oh. I mean, nothing bad by it. I mean, nothing, nothing bad by it, man. Just didn't think you'd respond like that. Oscar's response is barely recognizable when each word comes out between a laugh and regardless of its sincerity, it's hard to take seriously with that grin on his face, tears in his eyes. Just ignore him. Lily, did you have anything you wanted to talk about? Despite the annoyed tone of his words, Lily, Lee's pressing his lips together as if holding back a smile of his own. Looks like Oscar's antics even have an effect on Lee. Not that that would ever not that he would ever admit it or give him the satisfaction. He'd never let him live it down. 
Looking back towards Lucas, his expression has changed from downtrodden to bashful. His inner ears have become a deeper shade of pink, and he's playing with them as he, as he looks down towards the table. But my attention is drawn to a feminine figure approaching our table, coming right up to the edge of our booth with a demeanor so bubbly I wouldn't have guessed she was working as a waiter. Welcome to Snapping Jaws. We hope you enjoy your stay. We have a board, we have a board above the bar with all of today's lunch specials. Would any of you like something to drink while you decide on your order? Oscar perks up at the sight of the young waitress, a tall and lithe lioness with soft features. She looks to be in her mid-twenties. The most striking thing about her is the numerous fish on her uniform, a colorful rainbow of fish swimming around her sea blue skirt. <laughs> Can I have a beer? Ow! Hey! Oscar leans away from Lee with a face closely resembling a hurt puppy. Lee doesn't look like he's buying it at all, his eyes squinting with suspicion. He doesn't look angry or annoyed, though, merely scolding like a parent would be their misbehaving child. It's lunchtime, no alcohol. Water for me. Jesus, man, fine. It's ginger beer, then. Oh, can I please have a pink lemonade? I saw you guys did them earlier, and they look super cute. Actually, bring me two. They won't last very long. Lily's eager tone is a great way to diffuse the awkward tension, and I can feel Lucas relax next to me. I didn't realize how tightly he's been wound up. Oh, man, that reminds me of this restaurant I used to go to with my ex back in New York. Um, it was called uh, Friendly's. And they would serve all kinds of delicious burgers, and they specialize in ice cream. Their ice cream is, oh my god, absolutely incredible ice cream. But I remember they had like this really cute little drink. It was like a, um, it was like a gummy shark blue raspberry lemonade, and it was filled with gummy sharks, and it was adorable and silly, and it reminds me of this restaurant. And oh my god, good memories. <laughs> all right. Actually, now that I think about it, he did sit straighter as soon as she came up to our table. It's as if he's rebuilding his walls to block out any strangers like he did when I met him in class. Wanting to relieve as much tension as I can, I press my shoulder against him. He hesitates for a moment before leaning into my touch, and it's shocking just how fast he relaxes against me. That hardened expression melts away as quick as it came, and he even manages to bring a smile to his face. While his usual scowl fits him well, it's nice to see him with a smile every now and then. Thanks. It's a quiet whisper that I'm sure no one besides Lillian and myself can hear. There's a happy hum coming from next to me, and I don't even need to look towards her to know that Lily's eavesdropping on us. Don't worry, just order what you like. She won't bite. I know she won't. I'm not a child. Despite his words, his body screams uncertainty, and he looks towards the waitress, whose smile has grown tighter than it, had when, than it had been when she first arrived. She likely didn't expect ordering drinks to take this long. A root beer float. You do those, right? I saw some kids drinking some earlier. There's a firmness in Lucas's eyes, an unflinching glare that almost feels like a challenge, like he's daring her to say something. I know it's not how Lucas really feels, but it's just how he comes across. So very hostile. She raises an eyebrow at that, but only smiles and writes it down. With each pat of, tap of a pen on paper, I can feel Lucas's muscle relaxing. Muscles relaxing. And I'll have a Coke. Cutting in as soon as she finishes writing it down, she gives me a big smile that someone that someone took the initiative to spread this up, but I... Blah. She gives me a big smile that someone took the initiative to speed this up, but I did it just so she'll leave sooner. I think her presence is stressing Lucas out. Great! Uh, we'll get these into you right away, and we'll take your order then. And thank you for coming to Snapping Jaws. With that, she moves away from our table with a skip in her step that I can only assume comes from finally being able to escape our table. The feeling's mutual, even if she wasn't a bad person. With her gone, I lean over against Lucas, whispering in his ear quiet enough that I'm sure only Lily can pick it up. You doing okay? You looked a bit out of it there. Yeah, just, uh, I'm just scared when I talk to someone I don't know. They have problems with people. Now, bothering to keep his voice down, Lily, Lucas's reply is loud enough for the rest of the table to hear it with ease. Lee replies before I can. His voice is filled with the warmth that can only come from someone who takes care of a sibling. It's okay to be scared of people. I know a lot of people who have trouble talking to people. and a lot of people who have trouble talking to people. Okay. Yeah! My best friend gets real bad around people. His mutant gets extremely shy around anyone else. Sometimes he freezes up entirely. Oscar cuts in with an upbeat tune, trying to brighten the mood even if the content doesn't match the tone of his voice. Lucas looks at everyone with a confused expression, like he didn't understand why everyone's talking the way they are. He opens his mouth to say something before shaking his head, and his neutral expression returns, aloof and cold. Your friend's mute? And just like that, all the attention all the attention shifts towards Oscar. The otter looks more than happy to take all of it. Yeah, when we first met, he couldn't speak to anyone on the swim team. It caused some problems with the coach, but I gave him a hand and now we're chill. He can whisper into my ear now. It helps a lot. He's a great guy. You guys would love him. 
Lily looks ecstatic at that, leaning forward across the table with bright eyes. She looks so excited to make as many friends as she can, like she can't have enough. We're so different in that regard. This group are my only friends, and we've only been together a few days. Something wraps around my right leg and squeezes tightly. Even through my pants, I can feel its texture. It's thin and devoid of fur. Lee. He's wearing a concerned expression on his face like he can hear my every thought. Alongside that concern is pain like something is hurting him. I'm not sure why he's so worried, but then it hits me. He's worried I'm thinking this way because of him, because of what happened yesterday. And that makes, and that just makes me feel annoyed and mad. It, not just at him, but at myself too, because how I could let him feel like that. Because how can I let him feel like that? But I'm not sure how I can let him know it's not his fault. I doubt he wants to have the attention on him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be using his hidden tail. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been another episode of Violet Memoir, Lee's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!